Hi everybody, it is July 21, 2019. First I want to say I heard from Best Buy my computer is not repairable. I believe that they can get the data off my hard drive, but I have yet to find that out. So, uh, that's where I stand. Unbelievably, the Mac, after a couple of days of trying to negotiate my way around it, trying to figure out how to use it, it started developing some of the problems that I experience on PC. The Mac users who said that uh, you don't experience those problems, well, I did. And even on this um, PC, granted it's slow, but I'm not even sure if it's the computer or my provider, um, but the first day it was operating okay, now I'm experiencing problems. Uh, I don't understand. Maybe I am just you know, someone who has really bad luck with computers. Anyway, I want to remind everybody, I posted a video on, and it was about, I don't know, a month ago, on these video conferences on the 5G crisis. And I want to thank my subscriber for reminding me that they are now posting these videos. And the first one here, Dr. Devra Davis. I hope that you click on the link below and watch these interviews. They are really very good, and I hope that you circulate them. Dr. Devra Davis is a renowned, highly respected scientist, uh, doctor, and uh, has been involved with studies on 5G, and she speaks about the enormous very dangerous health effects, not just of 5G, 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G. I posted a video on an investigation, a really thorough investigation of the telecommunications industry, how they rolled out, Congress allowed the rollout, or the FDA allowed the rollout of cell phones and the only studies that were conducted were by the telecommunications industry. Those studies revealed the risk of cancer. Those studies were concealed by the telecommunications industry. Congress said, hey, we believe you, telecommunications industry. We believe you when you say cell phones are safe. So we'll just allow them. We won't ask for more independent studies will go with what you are saying to us. It has been dangerous from the get-go. The saturation now, these frequencies coming out of virtually, out of cars, out of appliances, out of smart meters, out of Wi-Fi, out of cell phones, out of cell towers, out of Gwen towers, out of satellites. Out yeah, we are now saturated in an environment that is not conducive to good health. And Deborah Davis, well, she is highly qualified to speak on the matter. I want to play a few minutes of Patrick Wood, who is, his website is uh, Technocracy Now, is it? I have forgotten. No, Techno Technocracy News. Um, he is he is known as probably the best researcher on technocracy and where all of this technology is leading us. Well, he has been on this for a very long time. And what he was saying 10 years ago, where it's leading us, we're now living. And I will go through many articles I won't be reading um, from many of the articles. I might read a few little blips from the article, 
but everything will be linked to below in the description box if you want to read uh, more about the subject matter of the article I have been getting comments from people who are saying I don't see any links I don't know what to tell you I post the links if you don't see them it might be your device or I don't it, it, I don't know what's going on here is another interview dangers of 5g to children's health from Robert F Kennedy jr. so I hope you check these interviews out let's listen to just a few minutes of Patrick Wood I don't know how to get rid of this banner down here at the bottom maybe I'll make ah no nope, but I think I made it a little bit smaller maybe that's the bottom sorry for the interruption here um, well I can't I want it to be a little bit bigger for your viewing uh, pleasure so here we go they want that data we used to say in the 70s Josh follow the money follow the power that's still true to some extent well of course it is <laughs> money is always seems to come into it somewhere mm -hmm. but today as far as technocracy is concerned here's how you here's how you and here's how you watch this follow the data follow the power go where the data is look for the data flow look for who's receiving not first collecting and then look who's receiving the data and what are they doing to it all of the people in the data world today are claiming that data is the new oil of the 21st century and they're absolutely right the money and the value today the income stream is in the data that these technocrats are able to extract from society so when you talk about smart city implementing all these sensors around whether they be light poles with microphones and cameras and the and the 5g transmitters whether it be uh, sensors and elevators and buildings and thermostats and, and smart meters on the sides of homes and businesses and smart meters for the water and the gas all the kind of stuff um, autonomous vehicles by the way driving around in the city and so on all those things are going to be connected via the internet of things by the time they're done implementing 100 percent smart city technology in one given area a, a computer with <clears throat> sufficient resources will be able to literally to model the city in real time and to rotate it look into it at, in different areas they want to look at this has never been possible what are some of the what are some of the applications of that and, and before you answer that i'll just maybe say that i have a good friend who says you know has this coined this saying we scare because we care and so we're gonna we're gonna go into a little bit of these you know might potentially scary areas to really look at like what this technology is and or could be used for um and so that we can deal with this with what is actually happening bring the conversation forward I apologize I paused it because of the truck outside um, here we go intentionally you know change courses uh, change change course uh, collectively like that's what we're talking about here right we're, we're talking about like having a, a, a period of time in which we're coming to terms with this reality we're, we're investigating solutions and we're getting intentional about it but let's just go into this patrick like what what are some of your deepest concerns what are you seeing in terms of application here and in the future with this in, in this technology this whole body of truth we're talking about here has to do with social control that's what technocracy was about in the first place that's what sustainable development is about today with agenda 21 and 2030 agenda and the new urban agenda and so on from the united nations it's about social control. This is what, this is what the uh, the the new uh, the Green New Deal is all about. That AOC has introduced into our country with the firestorm. I might add, everybody's talking about it now. This is about social control, getting you to do what they want you to do. It takes away private choice. It takes away citizen choice. It takes away citizen concerns completely, and says essentially, 
This is such an ego trip. We know what's best for you. You should trust us to make all your decisions for you. Why? Your purchasing decisions, your medical decisions, your travel decisions, your consumption decisions, how many children you have decisions, everything under the sun is envisioned right now, is on the table for them to, ex to exercise social control over you and I. This is, not, it, this is not just by mistake or unintended. This is the way it was from the beginning. Now we're really feeling the bite, Josh, is the problem. Look at China. China has implemented the social credit scoring system over there that's affected every, every person in their country. All 1.4 billion people have been enrolled into the social credit system with their pictures, with biometric data, with all of the data, everything that happens, they know, the government does. They're applying artificial intelligence now to rank and rate and sort all of the people in the country, the outliers that are troublemakers, like you and me, <laughs> the outliers are simply dropped out of the system. They're excluded. And that's true. And we already have a social credit score or a social credit system operating here in the United States. But a lot of people don't realize it. I came across an article, but that I want to focus on exclusively, which will be my next video. I want to show you though, for anybody who doesn't know what the social credit system is, that is operating in China. I will link below to this article, Beijing sets plan to monitor behavior of every resident by 2020. Uh, yeah, rewards and punishments for the residents, for the citizens of China, based on data. Why do you think they're collecting all the data on us? Same reason. Uh, <laughs> The data that will be collected from various departments monitoring citizens' social behavior. If you're good, you'll get rewards. If you're bad, according to government standards, you will live a rather miserable life. Locked into a permanent surveillance program rated on a social credit system, China assesses their citizens' behavior to decide if an individual is law-abiding, trustworthy, if they behave properly in the eyes of the Chinese government, they'll get high scores, they misbehave, they'll get low scores, higher scores, can also, they'll open the green channel, which will expedite residents' applications for higher quality education, medical resources, um, airplane tickets, hotel reservations, you'll get loans. If you're blacklisted, you will find that you are limited everywhere. It will be very difficult to move if you are deemed untrustworthy. Now, if you are untrustworthy, does it mean that you have murdered someone? No. Does it mean that you broke into somebody's home? No. Could it mean that you jaywalked? Yes. Could it mean that you are late paying a bill? Yes. So, <laughs> why have they been collecting data on all of us? for so long, even before 9-11, because they will be implementing the social credit scoring system that China has, although it's already operating in many ways that people don't realize, but it's going to be operating in a way that suddenly the world knows that it's operating. Home tech is getting smarter and creepier. Anybody who has a smartphone, anyone who has Alexa, 
uh, anyone who has you know these latest and greatest gadgets appliances refrigerators cars toys thermostats oh wait let me say when he was talking when uh, Patrick Wood was talking about the sensors the smart cities sensors are already in everything everything your appliances your refrigerators uh, your clothing that you buy the food that you buy everything you buy has a sensor on it no joke it's already happening they are already collecting the data on everything that you purchase now certainly if you're purchasing it online that really gives them very easy access to that data everything that you purchase in a store has a sensor on it and that sensor also has a tracking device so you buy something and you give it to someone else they know where that product has gone that's already happening so with every additional smart device that you put into your home or your business uh, they have more and more details about your daily life it's decentralized surveillance your car is watching you who owns the data vast quantities of data to the car manufacturer not just on vehicle performance but personal information your car is recording your conversations in the car the weight of everybody in your car the restaurants you're going to the music that you like the places that you go and that data is not just being kept with car manufacturers law enforcement can access that data these are in I'd say the vehicles from 2005 on probably maybe even earlier but each addition each new addition has more surveillance these cars that people are buying that are Wi-Fi activated talk about <laughs> surveillance your Volvo Volvo will soon call the cops if it thinks you've been drinking it's not just going to be in Volvo it's Big Brother all over sign telling you how fast you're driving may be spying on you cameras concealed in these uh, radar detection um, speed monitoring so they're collecting all of that data they already know if you've been speeding don't be surprised if one day via email or the actual uh, snail mail you get a ticket and you're like how did I that's already happened to me not with this but driving around the country I, I think it was in Illinois I was trying to get through Chicago and I didn't know that they had these like fast lanes and what they were about and I was able to just drive through and then suddenly I got a ticket it happened it happened to me I think about three times and the latest was a few years ago coming back from Maine and I went through they had I think it was on the Mass Pike that I have driven on forever so suddenly it was like where did the tolls go they didn't have tolls but they recorded every car that went through and I got in the mail the bill for that toll uh, boy yes it's you know the, for the people who say 
Well, I don't care. I'm not doing anything wrong. You have no idea that you are being caught in a net. You are being caught in a net. And it doesn't matter. If government standards you just don't uh, comply with, jaywalk, suddenly you're going, instead of 25 miles per hour, you're going 28 miles per hour. Your credit score is lower. You uh, uh, forget to pay a bill and you pay it late. Your credit score is lower. Simple things that you can do, which, you know, uh, it was just basic, oh, well, you know, I'm going to jaywalk or, oh, my God, I forgot to pay a bill. But it's going to lower your credit score. So these are things that human beings, you know, we're not perfect. So when you say, I don't care, I'm not doing anything wrong. What is wrong? You don't know what the definition of wrong is today. Airplane seat cameras could be your new spy in the sky. What? Surely you can't be serious. Oh, surely we are very serious. Sensors, cameras, everywhere. This is our new world. First wireless insect size robot takes flight. And I believe that these have been operating. We have insects spying on us. Even cyborg cockroaches. Are they using these for search and rescue missions? Well, they might. Is that the only application? No. Please. When, you know, I think about all of this data collection, right? And very often I remember Obama, the years of Obama. And when it came out, you know, Eric Snow, uh, Snowden, is it Eric? I can't even remember the guy's name. Um, and there was a lot of mainstream media noise about, oh, the NSA is spying on us. And Obama, Daddy Obama, comes out and says, children, don't worry. It's only metadata that is being collected. And that metadata is, we can't identify you via the metadata. So don't worry. No one's reading your emails. No one's listening to your conversations. And the children bought it. We have been infantilized. And we look at government officials as if they are mommy and daddy. And we just accept everything that they say. Well, that uh, has been a very dangerous psyche because it has let us right to the nightmare that we are living. Finger vein vending machines and a global biometric police database. That's right, yeah. Vending machines will know who you are and if you have a criminal record or if you have a low social credit score, you may not be able to purchase an item. New York City subway denies using real-time face recognition screens. You're going to believe your, your transportation authorities, whether it's New York or Ohio or South Carolina or California? No. When they say there is no capability to recognize or identify individuals and absolutely no plan to do so. Oh, God, how could you possibly think we would do that? Facial recognition. They got you. Even if you have not posted any videos with your face on YouTube, posted any pictures of yourself on Facebook, surveillance cameras in stores got your face. Friends that posted pictures of you on their Facebook page, they got you. So everywhere you go, facial recognition is operating. 
the 5G is for real-time access to all of the data. Real-time, meaning everything that you're doing in the present moment, you will be watched, you will be listened to. Try to escape this system, there ain't no way. So, uh, here, subway in New York. Everybody walking around the subway, coming off the trains, recording in progress. What else does it say? Please pay your fare. <laughs> Superimposed on a video feed. You don't pay that fare? Wow. Your credit score is going to go down. So it's happening all over the world. Uh, yeah, this is the reshaping of our world into a incredibly dark dystopia where if you've read 1984 or seen the movie, at least Winston had one little corner in his apartment where the telescreen couldn't see him so he could write in his diary. That little corner in this world doesn't exist doesn't exist. So the UK businesses using artificial intelligence to monitor staff activity. It's also operating here. Orwell Incorporated. How your employer spies on you from when you wake up until you go to bed. Increasing number of large companies using data from employees electronic devices to track such personal details like when you wake up, where you go for coffee, you go to the gym at the end of the day. You have a uh, Fitbit that is recording how many steps you take. All of it, all of it, all of it collected by your employer. Everything that you're doing at work, many don't know this. It's all concealed. They have, this was a, a Wall Street Journal article that I can't access, but in that article, they walk you through the day of a fictional worker, Chet. The employer logs the time and his location when he first wakes up to check his email. From there, the uh, employer can check his log when he goes to a coffee shop with a Wi-Fi connection. Bluetooth device and his ID badge mark the time he arrives at the office while tracking his movement around the building. Chet then is at his desk. His web browsing is tracked along with his email. New software, software breaks down how workers interact with email and how quickly colleagues reply in, attempt, in an attempt to see which employees are most influential. Some software on company computers even snaps screenshots every 30 seconds to evaluate productivity and hours worked phone conversations recorded, transcribed, monitored. Companies use this information to find subject matter experts and measure productivity. Every uh, conference room in big companies now, I'm sure the employee, employees know, everything is being recorded, video, audio, then Chet goes to the gym for a run or whatever he's doing and the company will determine the employees who exercise, the employees who don't, whether or not they're going to be paying for health and fitness services. That data could also go to health insurance companies. If you're not exercising, your premiums are going to go up. Yes, we have machines now reading our emotions, our emotions, identify minute facial expressions and map them on a corresponding emotion uh, algorithms to detect emotion from facial expressions. Some developers claim that automatic emotion detection systems will not only be better than humans at discovering true emotions by analyzing the face, but that these algorithms will become attuned to our innermost feelings. You go into a store and you have a facial expression of 
suspicion. You're looking too quickly. Your eyes are moving too quickly. You have, you know, that kind of facial expression that may lead one to believe that you're going to steal something pre-crime. It's a dangerous world that we have now developed here. So let me go through some information on here. Google caught secretly recording conversations through your mobile device. We know that, right? We know Google, Google is not a private company. This is government. This is big brother, big brother. Uh, automating retail googly eyed robots are coming to nearly 500 grocery stores. Yes. Ah, oh, it's so cute. Adult infants. Yes. Yes. Get them to look like cartoon characters and everybody will just believe that it's not Big Brother and it's safe and it's cute. It's cute, isn't it? Surveillance is not cute. The loss of privacy is not cute. The loss of your own free will is not cute. Google's always listening. Their security system, that people, their Nest security system, secret embedded microphones, Amazon manually reviewing voice data. They have, uh, oh God, they've got contract workers in Boston, Costa Rica, India, Romania, other countries, and they're listening to what you're saying in your home to Alexa, or you're not speaking to Alexa. You're just speaking in your home. Now, Amazon says, we take the security and privacy of our customers' personal information seriously. Children are naive. And they believe what mommy and daddy are saying to them. They believe their authority figures. Well, why then would Amazon have opted in all of their customers to this. You have to opt out, but their customers don't know about it. They don't know about it. So how do you opt out of something that you don't know you've been opted in to? You can. So they're secretly listening analyzing, monitoring everything that you're saying. Data collection. Is that really just so that Amazon can put on your computer as you're going through the internet those ads? Oh, yes, I, I was talking about boots that I wanted. And wow, now I turn on the internet and I'm getting all of these ads for boots. Do you really think that that's the purpose here? That they've hired so many contract workers to listen to your conversations in your home? Apple also listening. Snitch, switch, smart assistance with moral AI could call police on owners who break the law. This is what is, you know, you buy these gadgets, you buy surveillance cameras, you buy, you buy, you buy, but one day you will meet that product that you bought, whether it's a dishwasher or a surveillance camera or an Alexa device or a robot that you thought was so cute, they'll turn on you. And it's no accident that Facebook <laughs> accidentally put hidden messages into their virtual reality controlling things. I don't know what this, this thing, Oculus Touch virtual reality. They had hidden messages. Big Brother is watching. The Masons were here. Oops. 
sorry. We don't know how that happened. Really? Really? You're going to buy that? How old are you? They tell us what they're doing. They tell us. Facebook, big brother. Law enforcement taps Google's sensor vault for location data. Treasure trove for police. Sensor vault. That's a new one that I had never heard of. It's a database, Google's database. The database has detailed location records from hundreds of millions of phones around the world. They collect information on the users of Google's products. Google, search, and YouTube, and all of Google products. Law enforcement can get geofence warrants seeking location data. Requests have spiked in the last six months. Google declined to answer specific questions about Sensor Vault, but said the company has narrowed how much identifiable information it gives police. Oh, yes, sounds like Obama. Thank you. Thank you for doing that, Google. You narrowed. You might not be able to identify me. Police using mysterious new tool to unlock cell phones. Police now have AI tool to catch liars. Homeland Security to scan your face at 20 top airports. Home, uh, uh, facial recognition operating all over. You're already being tracked. AT&T creates FirstNet for law enforcement surveillance. They working with law enforcement. You can read all about it by clicking on the link below. DARPA seeks FAA approval for military drones over American cities. This is where we're going. Yes, you do anything wrong and suddenly a drone shows up to paralyze you so that those uh, robotic police come to scoop you up. The, you know, the, this was all just a, a fictional idea, you know, this dystopia. Oh, we went to watch movies about it. It's manifested. It's reality. And Amazon, look, Google, Amazon, Facebook, the three primary, but also Twitter and all of these social media platforms, you know, most get t taken over anyway. But a $10 billion contract, Amazon, Pentagon, Google, they're all the same. The Pentagon is Google, is Facebook, is Amazon. All of the data that you have placed on these sites, hope it doesn't come back to bite you. FBI to ramp up social media surveillance? Come on. FBI has already been collecting emails, IP addresses, telephone numbers, uh, likely aliases used over social media, uh, location-based tracking, persistent keyword monitoring, access to one's personal social media history. Ah, but they have not been able to do it really in real time, 5G. That's why the rollout of 5G is so critical. Real time, they want real time access to you jaywalking. Dystopia, your facial record follows you everywhere. Technocrat, survey shows American approval of facial recognition tech. tech. And yeah, it's our acceptance. We've helped manifest this net that we have trapped ourselves in. And government threat list names at least 8 million Americans who will be detained when martial law is imposed. We've already learned those lists, the watch lists, the enemy combatant, the uh, potential terrorists. We already have known Americans. Suddenly they want to fly somewhere and they can't. And they, I, I mean, trying to get off these lists, almost it, it, impossible. So, police in Canada are tracking people's negative behavior in a risk database. Okay. They're tracking people's behavior all over, our behavior as well. 
very dangerous what we have manifested, what we have helped manifest. You got a smartphone, an iPhone, get rid of it. You got an Alexa, get rid of it. it you, you just bought a brand new car, I would get rid of it. Buy an older car. Don't buy any new appliances. Try to, you know, limit the data that they can collect on you, you know, in the future. But they have so much data on us. We already have social credit scores, I am quite sure. All links are below. Below. Sorry. Ciao, guys.